All right, welcome everybody. It has been a long time since we had the last episode of High Elo Games casted live on stream. Here we are back. Um, I hope you're doing good so far and we're now having a great game in front of us where we have Witterson and Julian, which is Bentas Brot, playing against King Duns and Ashton Butcher, the two the two winners of almost every Masters Cup. I think together they won four Masters Cups. So a great game can be expected and with a look already at the income we see all four players here took the mastermind option greed so everybody will start with five bonus income but only has 10 fighters he can select from at the very beginning and the additional four units reroll within the game Um, with having a look at the Legion spells, we're having a lot of potential around wave 11, 12 and 13 together um, with, with some trick plays and uh, with pawn shop. So here, Embargo, Venture, this is a really, really um, critical situation they have to choose there because as soon as somebody is going Embargo, the other, the other one can basically Venture for free since he's not able to get punished 11 or 12 at least 11 uh, after the income he can't send any anymore this is a very very critical combination um, to choose from and then we have obviously the pawn shop so this is going to be a really nice interesting task and we can already see the five worker starts on everybody so we're having not only the greedy uh, mastermind option but we also have the greedy place so what isn't even pushing up to six workers because he got a king up on wave one and now first time we're seeing real big sense double brood out within income time against ashton and king with having a look at their setups it's not looking too great for them so against the brood king can't do anything here he is going he's going to leak i i haven't seen this uh, come to play with ashton but the concert here is actually able to snipe the brute. I'm not sure if it if it will happen, but it is able to. S oh, there's a snail on top. I didn't see that coming. This ruins now the build. The the brute might not get sniped, and this will result in a huge leak for Ashton. Now the snail just carried Widdison really hard there. Otherwise, you can see the concert is in a really good spot to snipe the brute. It's now starting, but it's probably not enough to to fulfill the job. The brute will kill the concert. Will kill the wild shroom. Oh, he was so lucky. Wait, is this holding? And, uh, what? How did King snap the brute as well? And, oh, I didn't see it, damn it. So either they go both got really lucky, or this is pure, pure power play. I know that this that this is sniping the brute. I just thought the snail might might interrupt interrupt the action. Um, but like this, this is looking awesome. Now King Ashton, they're having a huge lead. They've, they've got the non-income sense with the double brute. They were holding both of them and now they're just able to snowball hard into this game. Seven workers on both of them. They're going to send 80 on four. This is just gonna be insane. What are we going to see on wave 4. So as I mentioned there's the 80 cent coming from King. I wonder why Ashen did not full send. Um, there was a lot of potential to leak this build uh, on wave 4. He's not looking great at all. He probably just wants to shift some some Mythium to make a reason on 5 where um, I would say Julian is likely to shift some gold for the Violet on wave 6. So he's, he's playing some mind games with him. He's probably um, wishing for an undercut on the upcoming wave and I think it's a really really smart decision to make it was enough already I mean, if you're having a look the value is quite high it was a small send and he's still leaking his setup is just not ideal for wave 4 we're having all split units here basically useless we're having the windhawk which is a good tank but doesn't deal good damage and then there's a tempest they are really, really bad against this wave 4 since their bonus passive shot is not against flying units. So all the flying chickens here can't be attacked with that and their passive, their armor type 
is uh, fortified, so they're, they're getting a lot of damage there. Alright. Following now, we have the Hardened Mudman. So King playing a role without Butcher Nightmare. You don't have the Butcher comp. Um, obviously without Butcher, I meant. Um, he's playing the, the Nightmare without the Butcher as a, as a combination, so he's not having any lifesteal. Nightmare is still a very, very strong unit early on. Um, especially, I would say, waves 1 to 4 and then 6, 7, 8. Um, it's really shining. And with, with stuff like a Hardened Mudman, he's actually really good to go and cover himself on, on waves where he's not too great. Which are, in this case, 9 and 5. But let's see how it's going on. We, we see there's long saves already from the West team and we see the double brutes coming out for wave 6. This is perfect since King is now going to have the Dehardened Mudman. It's it's very likely to harm him a lot and Ashton with his income send might be able to get the Canopy here. Canopy together with the Butcher is a real is a real force on, on the upcoming wave on wave 6. So the impact damage is just going to wreck the Rockos. On top you have some more heal on top of the passive heal from the Canopy. So I actually can see Ashton hold here. King is not looking too great. He's having the Windhawks though, um, so he will he will have his Nightmare tank, and the Windhawks going to be his main damage dealers. On the other hand side, we see Julian. He was not able to get the the Violet out, so he's very very likely to leak. And um, with Witherson here having the Lioness, he's lacking a lot of damage, especially with his split already down. Um, but let's have an eye on that. If the Green Devils is actually surviving, he has still a unit that is able to put out a lot of damage. So I'm really, really looking forward um, to see what is happening here. We already see Julian leaking this. King, the Nightmare was tanking as expected. He's still leaking. It was just too much of a send in Ashton as predicted. He's holding this Canopy together with a Wild Shroom. It's really, really strong on 6 and 7. He's gonna have a hard time on 8. But again, on 9, it's, it's a unit you kind of like to, to have for your impact damage. So they're just expanding their lead right now. We see the worker lead. I mean, it's massive. We're having 10 workers on Ashton, while Julian, Bentos Port, is still stuck on 7 workers. So there's a lot of stuff, um, of bad sense, of, of good plays he needs to recover from this on top of their... 50% King Health League. So it's already really shifting to one side. Ashton even pushing to 12 workers. As I already said, wave 7. There's nothing he has to fear on that wave. Wave 8 is going to be more of the, the critical thing. But with that many workers, they they can just income send. And there will be some, some um, opportunities for him to build with all the income. So let's really have an eye on that. I'm... I'm convinced we see big sense on 8 coming, while Witherson and Bantas Port are not looking great there as well. So, wave 8 got buffed a lot lately, so I think it's 3 patches after another. This wave got, got buffed. It is a real powerhouse now, the attack speed is insane. Pack Leader is one of the best sends at the moment you can do there, because of the fast attack speed of the wave and the um, relatively high... Um, HP from, from the unit itself. It has 2k HP, so it's it's a real machine in, in tanking for the wave, so pack leader on wave 8 is something you really see often in, in high Edo gameplay. It was not it was not uh, enough Mythium they had, and Ashton needed the income, as I mentioned. He's not the greatest on, on 8, so he, he rather takes the income here and holds himself. Just don't make any mistakes, don't lose the lead and play a little bit safer. Here, Julian expecting the send. Going still for the Violet though. So if he was really full building for wave 8, he could have done the Leviathan. Um, Might have been a better choice, but overall it is... Um, yeah, it is kind of clever to, to build for both options. Um, if, if you're not that far behind, it would be clever to build for both options, as he does, to build a unit that is good on, on 9 and build a unit that is good on 8, which would have been the, the Hardened Mudman, so it's not great on 8, but it's it's not totally useless. 
she's she's holding like this or, or only leaking small but there's one there's one thing we have to mention in a situation where you're so far behind especially in workers Defeat. it is most of the times better to like commit on one wave and and just play the mind game so if you win that one wave you're clutch holding for example and you're just you're just coming out of this strong afterwards it's a huge win Otherwise, if you're if you're building for this one wave and then you get descent on the other wave, I mean you've been you've you've tried, right? So often in a situation where you're a lot, a lot of uh, worker or a lot of um, king HP behind, that might be a really good play. But that's it for now. <laughs> we had a win on wave eight. GG to King and Ashton. They played more than solid. It was a stunning performance, and I hope you enjoyed the fast game.